have questions you want to hear discussed on the show? Find us on Facebook or visit BetweenTwoPastries.com and drop us a line. Want to support the show? Find us on Patreon for exclusive content. If you love the show, find us on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform. Hit the subscribe button and leave us a review. Welcome to Between Two Pastries. This is Nicole. Hey everyone, it's Annie. We are excited for today because we have our very first um, panel of sports dietitians. Woo woo! This is going to be awesome. Yeah. Well, it's funny because, you know, Annie and I were kind of talking about this when we always think about like, okay, you know, who do we want to have on, blah, blah, blah. And um, we're like, you know what? We want a panel of sports RDs that hear the same things we do. (laughs) (laughs) And we want to make sure that all of our listeners can hear the same messaging <laughs> and just mm-hmm. slightly kidding, but slightly not. Right. So um, it, it's also really great, though, to get everybody's, um, you know, different perspective on things, points of view. You know, everybody probably does deal with things a little bit differently. And so anyway, we're here to kind of talk about all of it. And I think our listeners will really enjoy that, too. So welcome all of you. We're going to do brief introductions. I'm also including all of their amazing bios in our show notes. So make sure you do check those out because these are all very lovely women, very educated, awesome, super powerful <laughs> people. So please check them. All right. Um, up first is Kylie Van Horn. Welcome, Miss Kylie. Kylie, woo-woo. Kylie is the founder and owner of her sports nutrition business, Fly Nutrition. So dig that name. The first time I heard that, I'm like, she is so on point, um, which helps runners, triathletes, cyclists, and skiers to learn not only the why, but the how behind fueling the performance. Uh, welcome, Kylie. And Kylie, um, you reside in Aspen, right? Uh, just outside of Aspen. Cool. Yeah. Cause in your bio, you're like, we like to play in Aspen. And so I was thinking, do you live there? Do you just like, <laughs> definitely <play>? not. <laughs> if I had $13 million to well, buy the average price home, maybe, but <laughs> well, you know, I was thinking too, cause I'm like, wow, Aspen just sounds so like, Whoa, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that's it's, not it's, my, uh, scene it's necessarily. <laughs> super cool that you get to play there though. So I do love that for sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, welcome, Kylie and sweet Miss Sarah. Sarah, I just had a chance there and I kind of um, connected. Was it the summer we connected or fall? It was something like that for the first time. It was this fall, I think. Like yeah. From, yeah. Yeah. So um, and as soon as I uh, met her, too, I was just like, oh, my gosh, I am asking her to be on this uh, panel, too. So, Sarah, welcome. Um, You came from Utah, correct? That is correct. Yeah, yeah, I moved out from Salt Lake City to Wisconsin this summer. Oh, I know. So how has it been so far? It's very <laughs> different. Yeah, it's, it's right. hard to compare, but I'm not here to compare uh, oh. the two states. But I'm finding things that I love. There's so much more recreation than I think people give Wisconsin credit for. So oh. I'm really finding those fun places and spaces to also play outside like Kylie does too, but a little different than Aspen. Yeah, (laughs) no, but that's so cool. And I I really appreciate the props for Milwaukee. So, um, I mean, it's, it's nice to hear outsiders come in and be like, yeah, this is actually kind of (laughs) cool. So yeah, we like it too. Um, so Sarah, Sarah Hellring is the head performance dietitian for Exos Ballpark Commons, which is a new uh, complex here in the Franklin area of um, Wisconsin, a sports performance institute um, that provides all sports wellness uh, services under one roof from training to physical therapy to sports nutrition, which is awesome. So, so hoping you're having a good time with that as well. And Welcome. <laughs> And then we've got Miss Heidi Strickler. So I met Heidi kind of virtually more so um, in in the social media world and love what she posts, loves what she has to say. Um, It's been really cool following her journey, um, which I'm sure she'll have time to talk about because her journey started um, in a, in a different way than just, I'm just going to go to school to be a dietitian. So, um, Heidi is a sports, um, dietitian. So she's an RD. She's a certified specialist in sports dietetics. So like Nicole, she's a CSSD. That's a very high ranking, uh, with certification in our world. And then she's also has a metabolic efficiency training specialist certification, a MET certification. She has her master's in sports nutrition from Liverpool, John Moores University, which is in England, which is really cool. Um, I wish I had that because 
not, I mean, I have a master's, but I would wish it were from England. That's pretty cool. It uh, <laughs> doesn't matter where in England, just says England. Yeah, right. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. Um, but she works uh, with athletes of all types, um, eating disorders, um, plant-based, everything in her own practice. So welcome, Heidi. She does live in Seattle, which is really awesome. Thank you for getting up super early this yeah, morning. You're, if you you're were early, not girl. Already <laughs> Thank you. Oh, gosh. Very dark outside. <laughs> yeah. I can only imagine. (laughs) So we are so glad to have you and everyone here um, today for this panel. So thank you. Awesome, guys. So gosh, there's so much that I know that we really like want to talk about and what have you. Um, Annie, what do you think we should start with? I'm kind of thinking like. I'm like starstruck a little bit that we have this right now, know, to be totally so honest. Fun. Um, well, because everybody has such great experience and it's awesome. It really feels great. So I'm, I'll am i be totally honest. Here's where I want to start. Um, I think we have to bring up um, supplements and I'll say that broad in a broad Yeah, I guess sense. we're really kicking it off right away. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to just start with <laughs> particular supplements in the form of green powders that athletes oh. feel they have to take. Oh. Um, and I don't know if you guys see this regularly, um, certainly on the collegiate to professional side of uh, strength sports, your soccer, your baseball, your basketball, you don't see this stuff anywhere. This is like its own little niche in the endurance world with specifically runners spilling over into triathletes and ski, you know, all of those types of uh, endurance sports. So to kind of kick it off with thoughts and feelings on, on that, what do you tell athletes? What do you, what's your experience with it? I always, I'm constantly finding myself kind of on the defense, like, why are you doing this? Like, it, you know, why are you adding the, while well, it improves my performance says who, cause you didn't finish that race and you didn't do this and it's the same as that, you know? So I'm just curious what your thought, thoughts are on powders and potions and supplements and your approach and your yeah, approach, what's your approach, who wants to kick it off? Uh, Sarah, go ahead. Do you have any experience with this? Yeah, yeah, I can start us off. I definitely do. Um, I worked in the collegiate space prior to coming to the Sports mm. Performance Institute, and it was really widespread used. I worked with cross country and track um, specifically, and at least in my case, the athletes that I worked with, um, I saw a lot of them using it as kind of the default instead of focusing uh. on other lifestyle behaviors, habits, Mm -hmm. different things that there's so much we could work on together. Mm -hmm. It became kind of that um, crutch, if you will, as kind of that catch-all, right? Of, oh, it'll fix everything for me. This is what I want to primarily use. You know, I I feel it working. And then we dig a little bit deeper and I'd ask, tell me why you feel it's working. Because I always like to seek understanding. You know, I always am very open-minded. And then we kind of dive deeper and oh, actually my energy levels aren't that great. (laughs) Oh shoot. You know, I'm actually not finishing like the race that I, how I wanted to finish or in the the PR that I was hoping for, or, you know, actually during practice, I haven't been hitting the splits that coach and I outlined at the very beginning of the year. And we're mid season at this point. And so I saw that quite a bit. And so I think my approach with it was, you know, to hear them out to, like I said, seek that understanding and make sure that they know that I'm hearing them. I'm trying to understand where they're coming from, but then opening up that door to why is it this kind of our main focal point and how we can go down all these other avenues that'll mm-hmm. lead to more of that long lasting sustainable change and peak in performance that we're looking for. So I think just meeting them where they're at, but then also, you know, bringing in that influx of other ways and other ideas of going about it that are going to allow for that positive change they're looking for in performance was really helpful um, in those athletes' cases and making sure that we're not just setting our sights on this one magical thing um, because there is no one magical thing. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and that's such a good point, but it's also nice how, you know, you're also able to kind of, without even saying so like, oh, you're believing in the placebo effect, you know, or, oh, you know, you're trying to, you know, give this thing way more power than it has at all. And, you know, so that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Kylie, do you see this in the Colorado scene quite often? Um, yeah, and I think part of the problem is um a lot of podcasts and um mm-hmm. people are being endorsed by certain mm-hmm. companies that I'm not gonna mm-hmm. name <laughs> because they have a lot I'm with of you. money. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, right. 
well, they have a lot of money. So I'm like, oh, well, they're being, you know, they're supporting these podcasts and helping them make money and survive. But at the same time, then it's like causing more people to hear about these powders and then think that they're like a cure off for everything. Um, and my biggest issue is that, you know, if we're taking something like that with high amounts of, you know, antioxidants, vitamins and minerals, like what is that doing physiologically, especially if we don't have blood work done and we don't know what's like one thing could interact with another thing. And so um, that, and then the herbal piece, like a lot of them have some herbs oh, in them that are yeah. maybe questionable. Uh, people don't think about medication interactions. So mm -hmm. it, it's definitely a common question that I get, uh, mm -hmm. uh, with any, uh, with a lot of athletes that we're working with. Um, but I kind of, I try to, if people have a better understanding, I think of, um, you know, like why we're maybe questioning them using that kind of like Sarah was saying, like, why are you using it and having them examine why they're using it and looking at their lifestyle and all that kind of stuff. And then that, that gets them thinking, you know, like, yeah. do I really need this? And also is it maybe causing like an imbalance somewhere else that I didn't think about? Yeah. And that is such a good point. And I also like, I love that you brought up, and I think this is kind of the main thing for all supplements in general, or for a lot of things that are just out there. Seriously, it is all about marketing. The more marketing that they have, like, they'll be like, oh, you know, this is a very popular product. Yeah, because people are buying it. It doesn't actually mean, though, that it's doing what it's doing. It's just that you have a sale. And so you can say then, like, oh, look how much impact we have. No, mm -hmm. not necessarily. <laughs> but that isn't what people, you know, see. And right. to your point, too, of like, you know, these um, celebrities or athletic celebrities who are potentially, you know, touting this too, or saying, oh yeah, you know, I use it for sure. Pfft, no. Yeah. Sure. Well, and I think one more, one more thought on that. It's really, really hard to fight the, it makes me feel better. Oh yeah. Okay. I can't argue that. I can't right. say that you're not feeling what you're feeling, although feelings are not always truth. It's, it's really hard to fight that. And that's always the last push out of someone is, yep. well, I feel better. So I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> so really frustrating. Heidi, what do you see with it, especially when working with plant-based athletes? Do you see people using more powders when, when plant-based? Um, I think sometimes, yes. I think it kind of depends on where they're coming from, how educated they are, how much time they've spent this deciding to go plant-based mm -hmm. uh I mean, yeah so I think yeah. you, know, you have a very wide spectrum there uh is it a high schooler is it a, a college kid is it a, an adult you know there's a lot of factors that can play into that but I think I mean so one of the first things that I tell because some whether it's the powder potion green mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. or you know, other supplements that can kind of come up, which I'm sure mm -hmm. all of you will agree is a very almost daily conversation. Mm -hmm. And yes, like some are medically necessary. You know, mm -hmm. if someone comes in ferritin is three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're doing it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. uh, but something like some of those green powders and potions, sometimes even potentially like a multivitamin. Again, it depends on the supplement, but I always just kind of say, one, this might just be expensive pee. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of how I frame a lot of supplements. And it up. from the guise of saying, you know, no, it might not be hurting you, mm -hmm. but it also might not be helping you. And, and this it's is expensive. why. Yes. Yeah. And some of the things that Kylie brought up of something like that, where there's so many things in one product and you don't really, it's not like iron deficiency or anemia where we can say, okay, your ferritin is three, you take an iron supplement. Now your ferritin is 16. That is working. Mm -hmm. right. You know, there's not a lot of really like measurable, measurable. Mm -hmm. measurable. it's very yeah. subjective. And so, I mean, again, if it's, I kind of give them obviously the choice and say, there's not you know, the placebo effect. Like if you want to keep taking X, Y, Z and we determine there's no negative benefits or like there's no negative, negative benefits, yeah. <laughs> no negative side effects, uh, then 
it is your choice if you want to be paying this much money for something that might not be hurt, like mm-hmm. helping you. Uh, but I do say, you know, oftentimes supplements can be expensive P and then yeah, to Kylie's point too, so many have anti-inflammatory antioxidant properties. And if they're taking it around exercise, then it's blunting their training response, which is the opposite of what we want, depending on where they are in their training phase. Right. And so I think there's just, there's a lot of factors that people don't consider and athletes and you know, podcast hosting, you know, advertising marketing has so much power. Oh, I see yeah. it with my young athletes, especially all the time. Like this athlete endorses this product. So now I will only use that brand for all of my everything, yeah. right? I won't use any oh, other brand, but that brand for mm-hmm. everything because this athlete uses it. And so mm-hmm. at least I feel like with kids, like, oh, I only have Celsius now. It like fizzles out at some point. But with it, when you have adults exactly. doing it who are like 40s and you're like, oh my God, like you're, this is your, like you're choosing this for mm-hmm. life. Like you, mm-hmm. you know, and so oftentimes with kids, you know, it's like, well, you try to educate them and they just, they're not going to listen, but it fizzles right at some point. Like they grow out of things, but man, the, the ultra endurance or just even the running Ironman community, that's a tough crowd. The adults in there can be really tough, superstitious and very like this person said this, therefore I'm going to believe it. Even though they're not credentialed, they have nothing behind their name. And it's like, then they come to you as the dietitian and they're like, Hey, I want your advice. You give them advice. And then they say, no, that's not right. right. <laughs> I don't know if you guys experience that, but yeah. I, it happens constantly, whether it's weight management or, or sports, or it doesn't, it doesn't matter. People don't hear what they, they want to hear. Mm-hmm. It's like your toast. Yeah. So I don't know. Does that, does anyone have any, uh, <laughs> have experience with that? <laughs> yeah, I think. Like I work with high schoolers, a lot of high schoolers, a few college kids, and then adults, kind of two spectrums. And I think from that regard, I feel like in my experience, even though a lot of the high schoolers are struggling with disordered eating, eating disorders, uh, they do tend to be a little bit more open-minded to change uh, yeah. versus the adults who are a lot more <laughs> set in their ways or beliefs or, you know, whatever it might be. And then I do that, you know, there have been times I think where we're talking about whatever topic we're talking about, providing education, like you said, you know, they come and I even get this off the street. You know, if somebody says, figures out I'm a dietitian, they start asking all the questions. Yeah. Yeah. What do you eat? Answer, <laughs> like, what should I do? You know, what do you think about paleo and intermittent fasting, whatever? And I give them an answer they don't want. And all of a sudden they're less interested in the conversation. Yep. Yep. They bring, oh, but X, Y, Z, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then if, with, if it is a client or athlete, you know, maybe down the road, they do try what I suggested. Then they come back and like, oh my God, I feel so much <laughs> why did that work? <laughs> You're paying me to give you advice. <laughs> right. And, and I have all of these credentials. <laughs> right. Right. So, so, it's funny. People oh are funny. God. Yeah. People are very funny. Yeah. <laughs> It's something all right <laughs> well, and, it, and I think that we also have to keep like repeating like mm-hmm. constantly like these are not FDA approved like there isn't anything that's regulated with it and of course if you know if a supplement does need to be used that you know we really want it to be certified through certain you know supplemental certification you know just at least so we can check for purity right like mm-hmm. let's have there not be any contaminants in here number one Um, but like I had a client who said, Hey, you know, um, my doctor, this is what killed me. My doctor recommended this supplement and I looked at it. The website was a completely made up website, Mm. completely unreal people, just, um, like photo stocked people in it, like saying they're physicians and there was no way to contact the actual company to like, they were like, Oh, offering a 30 day refund or something. There was no way you could contact them. And um, apparently I dug a little deeper into this company and apparently there has been a lot of complaints, but they continue to sell. So because you can't contact the company and you will never get your money back. So it's like, I just, I want people to somehow hear those kinds of things. Like, I don't think you realize it is a multi-billion dollar business for a reason. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. 
it's just a business, you know, do we have benefits only if you're, you know, like you were saying, Heidi, low in ferritin. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, but I mean, honestly, and like you were saying too, Kylie, if we're not getting lab work done, there's no point. Like, what's the point? Mm-hmm. You know, what's the point? People don't understand that it's like, they think that this off weird thing that was found under a rock in Australia is going mm-hmm. to like make them, you know, run, you know, two seconds faster. You know, I understand if you're going for a medal, you're winning a million, million dollars. Yeah. Two seconds is going to make a difference. But seriously, for some of these recreational people, come on. Mm-hmm. Right. Off the soapbox. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just like, anyway. Take a step off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nicole, what is your next question for our panel? Um, I would like to know what is the top or top three questions or concerns that you guys hear the most? Kylie, why don't you kick it off if you're ready? <laughs> um, top three. Um, I would say one of them is supplement related. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely get a lot of questions about should I be taking this? Um, What are your thoughts on this? Um, What blood work? I do get people that want to know like what blood work I should get done. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So I feel like that's good. Um, Mm -hmm. I get a lot of questions and it might just be like the, the athletes that we focus on a lot of questions about um, how do I adjust my nutrition for different days of training? Um, mm-hmm. because I really want to learn, that's a skill I want to learn. And I don't know that much about it. I just eat the same thing every day. Mm-hmm. Um, that's cool. That's a great question. Mm-hmm. And then fueling plan questions, uh, mm-hmm. like, should I be, um, doing some of my workouts fasted or should mm. I, be pushing the grams of carbs that I'm getting in every hour. Um, like I'm getting mixed messaging, so I don't really know what I should be doing. So Dang I don't internet. know if that's top three, no. but those are three that came to mind. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's great. Those are great. Well, and I do think like either you were saying that pretty awesome, but like, I think we get those same questions as well. I know I do, but it's not, they're not so um, nicely worded or not like it's very, and not the clients or patients are, are attacking in any way, but more so there's so much fear behind it um, in the sense of like, are you telling me to do the right thing? Absolutely. And because this, I hear this over here, this yes. person, social media, whatever, saying this but then in your podcast or your book or your this you say this and then I listen to the, and it's just like this battle that they're having and it's really fascinating to kind of watch it in front of you you know unfold um because there's so much confusion which brings out so much fear that I don't think people realize is happening and then of course this little bit of defensiveness that comes with it right of like I put you in charge of my body. Now what's happening. And then you're, you're presenting it as like, people are really curious about it. And this curiosity may not necessarily lead to follow through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's then, usually. I think it's like a certain population too. I don't, I hate to yeah. like box people up, but um, certain population of people. And we work with a lot of like disordered eating and eating disorders and sometimes actually um those clients are more open-minded with like wanting to hear what your thoughts are and like really listening to you um I found um and and so maybe not arguing as much and then I mean I'm not gonna say that there aren't (laughs) groups that don't we don't get clients that you know argue with us uh but at the same time like I I do want to hear other people's perspective and where they're getting that from and and then you know present what we know and Mm -hmm. you know see what they think yeah um for sure haven't had anyone really like shut down and say like nope not listening to you at all like not gonna follow what you say um I think some people just want to like are curious and or maybe they've been doing something for a really long time and they're like actually I don't know if I'm feeling that good doing this Mm -hmm. um or I'm getting injured all the time so um a lot of people I think when they reach out to someone like us, uh, they're 
maybe at a they might be at a breaking point or like had something go wrong that they're mm, like mm -hmm. wait I actually do need help here um yeah so yeah. I kind of viewing it in that sense and trying to also you know be a good listener and that mm -hmm. sort of thing I think is good yeah totally. yeah cool awesome. Sarah how about you yeah, Kylie, that, I mean, that's great. I definitely get a lot of similar questions to you, but for us right now, we have a lot of soccer and baseball athletes. So I get a lot of questions about travel nutrition because mm. they are going to tournaments all the time. Uh, baseball is really big here in the Wisconsin area. That's mm -hmm. something that I was not familiar with. And yeah. so here. Um, and kids are playing year round. They're competing really hard. They're traveling a lot. So it kind of comes from both ways. The kids ask me, but also the parents ask me too, mm -hmm. you know, how do we fuel? What do we eat? Mm -hmm. We're at the ballpark and we have limited options. And so just kind of helping them take a step back and think about, small but creative ways of, well, can we bring cool, like a cooler, you know, do we have access to that? And do we have time to plan ahead or do we not? And if we don't, okay, so maybe we have to go through like quicker options, but let's kind of look at the area you're in and let me help you find those options, right. That are going to meet that pregame meal need, um, as well as help your, your kiddo, your athlete, you know, recover well, um, as well too. So that's been a pretty big one, um, of late this season is obviously done for now. Um, so I'm sure we'll get more questions about that in the, in the upcoming future, but another big one, of course, is supplementation too. Um, a lot of pre-workout is oh, used gosh. in this area. <laughs> yes. Um, a lot. And so, so bad. Yes, it's, it's not great. It's not great. Um, I consistently hear of a couple couple of brands um, that are not my favorite um, by any <laughs> stretch or means, but um, I educate on that and I talk about that and talk about just the reliance on pre-workout and mm -hmm. why that might be a red flag, you know, for us and, mm -hmm. and how there are other strategies to approach that instead of having to buy these expensive powders and, and stock up on that and bring that with us to every practice, every game. Yeah. Um, so we do a lot of education surrounding that at the performance Institute. And it has been really cool to see the kids as I think both Kylie, Heidi have spoken to that, just they're a little more open-minded. And so mm -hmm. getting them at that age where they're, you know, they're youth, they're teen and they're like, Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Sarah's telling me this. I didn't know this before. Let yeah. me try eating some carbs, having, you know, some water with <laughs> electrolytes, they feel so good. And yeah. it's so fun to have them come back to me and be like, I felt really good today at practice. I'm like, I saw you. Yeah. You were running the bases really well. Your power and velocity was incredible with that hit. Um, so it is fun to see those things that we talk about translate to success. And I'll have that open-mindedness that sometimes can be hard to find with different populations. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Well, and like those pre-workout things, um, those things drive me crazy. Um, yeah, just get it, a good night's sleep. It, get a good night's sleep because that, yes. like you said, I love that you're like, hey, you know, let's let's talk about maybe why you feel like you need it. And the first yeah. thing I was thinking of too is like these kids have practice until like 10 o'clock at night. They still have to do homework. Mm -hmm. And then like they're like, when is anybody sleeping anymore? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's terrible. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I'd want a pre-workout then too. I mean, no. that's what, that's, that's what adults call coffee. It's the same mm -hmm. type of driver. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, it's just, you know, those pre-workouts are simply like stimulant on the stimulant. highest level possible. They try to pack as much caffeine as I, I don't even think they care if it's safe or not. It's just sort of like, yeah, you know, we've got the most caffeine. I mean, they just, everybody just wants this big hit. And I think that's kind of what I also find too, is like, they want the hit. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I need that hit. You know, this is crazy. <laughs> oh, for sure. So I had, <laughs> yeah, I had an athlete the other day tell me like, oh, I really like the, the tingliness that I feel oh, after oh taking God. this, you know, the supplement. And yeah. I was like, yeah. let's step aside and just have a chat real quick, just about, you know, what you're experiencing, why you're experiencing, just so you know, you know, yeah. uh, the science behind it and what's kind of going on in your body. And, um, you know, maybe there's other methods we can talk about together. Um, and explore. Why do you new need to feel me. tingly? Yeah, <laughs> I really like that. Okay. <laughs> they keep it fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Heidi, what three questions do you typically get asked? 
so yeah, I kind of have, I guess maybe like four subsets of athletes that I work with. One is generally like younger high school, some college, mostly high school athletes with disorder eating, REDS, eating disorders, mm-hmm. amenorrhea, and then adult endurance athletes in general, mostly trail runners and runners for athletes, plant-based athletes, and then female bodied athletes doing menstrual cycle stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I think kind of each of those subsets maybe has obviously all have their have their own questions. But I think I mean I at this point most of my clients are young athletes with eating disorders. So I either parents will reach out to me and say parents, coaches, or the athlete themselves, which I get really excited about when mm-hmm. the actual mm-hmm. athlete has yes. either heard me talk or is aware of something has let them know that missing a period is not healthy that Mm -hmm. despite it being common that it's not normal that's right Um, and so I have really seen that upswing of athletes reaching out to me and then you know parents and coaches hey I've got an athlete and so I think yeah awareness of signs of reds and the fact that oh missing a period is actually a problem and not a badge Mm -hmm. of honor yep Mm -hmm. yep big quotes Um, so that's a really big one is I've lost my period I need you to help me get it back uh, is a a big one Um, sometimes parents will bring up other signs signs of disorder eating and then definitely a lot of similar to what Kylie said I feel like people come to us when something is no longer working broken Mm -hmm. you know when system is no longer functioning or they're realizing Mm -hmm. that something needs to change Mm -hmm. so lab work they've gotten you know anemia iron deficiency uh very very common sometimes iron overload um, or just really this understanding of Mm -hmm. what's been going on maybe mismanagement of iron stuff miseducation or lack thereof with the doctors and iron but that's a really really common one Mm -hmm. youth adults across all sports plant-based not plant-based gender is irrelevant like I have a lot of people come to me with funky lab work uh mm. particularly iron is the most common no doubt yeah and then I would say the other one is information around fueling for changing fueling strategies for racing ultra yeah. racing because maybe their stomach blew up or they mm. have a history of GI issues at every race or um you know they really want to take the next step in their trail and ultra or just general like performance mm-hmm. and so kind of recognizing hey I think nutrition is maybe something I could change and a lot of <laughs> people will come I just want you to tell me like that that specific race nutrition mm-hmm. and usually I say, well, you know, ultimately like what you're doing in a race is a very, very minute percentage of the training. And so it's like, okay, let's take a step back and actually look at, are you just getting enough in your body day in, day out Mm -hmm. and breaking it down like that? Okay. Like kind of have some baseline things I start with and we get into the timing and then it's that kind of peri workout, peri exercise nutrition. Then we get into race specific feeling, right? So you have those years of the pyramid, um, but I think, yeah, those are probably the three most common mm-hmm. or three of three very common things mm-hmm. that people will come to me for. It's mm-hmm. awesome. I love it. Everybody kind of like deals with similar and different things. I think it's very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's the whole thing. Like everything is so, I mean, there's so much to cover. Ugh. Nutrition is related to everything, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's oh, the purity. Thing. So yeah. Awesome. <laughs> do you guys ever see um or re- do you recommend people have different carbohydrates for racing or you know pre during post racing different types of carbohydrates? I think recently there's this surge of you know slow carbohydrates of no carbohydrates of not processed carbohydrate, you know, that it's this natural thing, but then what does natural mean to people that can vary? So just in general, what is your typical, you know, recommendation for not necessarily in numbers, but more so types of carbohydrates that you're recommending, um, in the race scene? Um, because I think that people really struggle and you're seeing a lot of races, aid stations, where at least I know when I run to that aid station, I'm like, 
I got to go to my backpack because this is not anything that I should be eating right now in the terms of like, there's fiber or there's, you know, yeah. things that aren't necessarily, yeah. you know, just, uh, it's an alternative to, to what I would recommend to someone. So I'm curious what your thoughts are on types of carbohydrates you're recommending. Um, Kylie, what are you doing? So I think, yeah, uh, there's a lot of misconceptions around um, especially things like, uh, fruit, like a lot of my athletes will be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to grab fruit at aid stations. I'm like, okay, well that might not set, set you up very well for, um, a little bit later down the road. Yeah. Uh, I, I do always like for people to obviously like pre- be practicing things throughout their training, um, and thinking about like, what is the the race that they're doing uh, and, and practicality for that in regards to, um, the choices that they're, uh, making in regards to sugars. Um, because I think, uh, a lot of people that are training maybe for a marathon, they're hearing messaging about real foods or whole foods and, um, you know, a, a lower glycemic, uh, mm-hmm. option for mm-hmm. that would not be my choice. Uh, like for a, like, even like a spring energy or something might not be my top choice for somebody running a marathon, because I feel Mm -hmm. like it's not going to give you as quick of an energy, uh, source. Um, whereas I might offer a suggestion of, uh, more high glycemic gels in that situation. Um, and then like for my ultra crowd, like just being aware, more awareness around like which foods contain fructose, which foods contain glucose, et cetera. Um, it's really been, interesting. I just started with a client that has, um, a, a sucrose, uh, dis- oh. or CSID, if you guys have heard yeah. of CSID. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, sure. So they can't break down yeah. uh, sucrose oh, yeah. uh, That's or big. starches, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. which has been for me, honestly, like a huge wow. learning experience as yeah. well for this, like ultra endurance person. Uh, totally. it's, it's really, really difficult for this person, but it also is like, making me examine every like yeah. composition of everything. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's making me more aware, uh, of that. And, and I think that honestly, um, just having some more sense of, of what the breakdown of different foods looks like and what, um, the breakdown of different sports nutrition products looks like is really helpful when trying to like, put together a plan that maybe makes sense for someone in their training and racing goals. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I don't know if that fully answers your question. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think you have to consider age too. I mean, if someone mm-hmm. is pre-menopausal or already there, that might be a different carbohydrate composition than Heidi, than your high schoolers. <laughs> like it, these might be very different things. And I think we, you know, I, w- I was in the habit and I have to kind of hit myself when I say it, you know, people ask what, what I might train with and I eat whole foods. I interpret that as I'm eating candy. That's a whole food, not a gel. Yeah. Right. And to people, people are hearing me saying like, I'm eating a whole food being earth and fruit and nuts. And that's what they're hearing. And and I was like, (laughs) no, not even a little bit. I'm just saying I'm eating real food Food. as opposed to a gel. So there's like this interpretation of the words, real, natural, whole that are to me, I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, no, that's totally not what I'm doing. I'm like eating candy and Twinkies. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So it's really an interesting play on words sometimes until like you said, Kylie, you get in there and you're looking at compositions and you're looking at labs and age and all of the things to kind of determine what's appropriate for, for this person and, and their GI tract too. Heidi, I want, before I ask you, Sarah, Heidi, I want you to comment on this because you also work in the running ultra endurance world. So what are you doing with carbs? What kind of carbs, what types? Yeah, I think, I mean, you definitely touched on a couple very important points and <clears throat> similar to that like whole food. I mean, I do tell a lot of my athletes, a lot of sports nutrition products are just expensive versions. Like, um, yes. 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 Flip flops are yes. expensive gummy bears. Yes. yes. Um, yes. you know, yes. something like that. And so yes. I think there is like <laughs> and just throw some salt on them. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's fine. Like I think that is one thing, you know, running people say like, and this is a whole, this is just another tangent. So I'm gonna try and not soapbox myself on <laughs> another soapbox and stay on this topic. But it's a very privileged sport in many. It um, has yeah, sure. 
So people are like, well, I can't afford. I mean, a spring, like, if I were to train and race on spring energy, I Oh my wouldn't God. be able to afford rent. I know. <laughs> right. Right. I know. Like, totally. Oh. So, Yep. so I think one, just like recognizing, okay, like this is marketing. You can, it's just, I just talk, I talk to my athletes regardless of age or what they're dealing with. Like it's building blocks. Your body needs building blocks. Your body does not know the difference between a cliff shot and a gummy bear. Nice. A bear bow. Uh, and so it just needs access to building blocks and energy. Awesome. I had a very interesting conversation. So, so there's that. Then there's the marketing you've talked about things like where it's like natural and organic mm -hmm. and usually products like that incorporate things like agave and honey, which are crazy high in fructose and are really going to jack up your stomach if you rely on mostly fructose based products. If you are someone in a female body, right, mm -hmm. right, people, right. Female body athletes process fructose less well yes. than female bodied athletes. Yeah. And so... then you can get into that and like the fiber and maybe things like monk fruit and or mm. um, sugar alcohols, which also are very problematic. And then you like the lower carb things um, or even from a, again, kind of, I, I talk about building blocks a lot and do a lot of comparison. I was working with a young athlete a couple months ago and eating disorder, kind of disordered eating, but we were talking about expanding her, variety before exercise and mm -hmm. she was very very restrictive and you know very like clean mm -hmm. and we were trying to we kind of just worked on variety and then I wanted to start experimenting with things that felt a little bit less safe so mm -hmm. I'm an avid pop tart fan for like just mm -hmm. in general but pre-run during run nutrition yeah. I think they're fantastic mm -hmm. yeah my running group out here is convinced that we're gonna get a, like a pop tart sponsorship <laughs> for running group because what other like it's fantastic um so i gave a couple recommendations i said you could you know try pop tart you could do you know have pe like peanut butter and jelly sandwich you could do rice krispie treat you could do a couple cookies and she got very uncomfortable for reasons i asked you know what what doesn't feel good about doing this and she was really worried <laughs> about stomach issues it ruining her practice like performance wise and then judgment from coaches and teammates about eating mm. junk food before yep. practice yep. oh so said, totally. yeah. Tell me, that is a what thing have, yeah. mm. what do you have before practice today and she said a luna bar and i asked what flavor and so i pulled up the nutrition facts of that luna bar on the internet and went and got the pop tart box from my nice <laughs> nice and i am not joking you gram for gram oh. calories carbs added sugar protein and fat were identical mm -hmm. between a pop tart and a luna bar Sweet. and i told this to her and again so with The point being, it's marketing. This is this like healthy female focused mm -hmm, right. bar, protein yep. bar, shiny label. Yep. And this is like yeah. trash junk food that, you know, you shouldn't eat again, in quotes. And they're literally the same building blocks. Love like your it. body needs energy. So let's one, just like recognize that you don't like it's marketing, it's money. Like your body just needs building blocks and it doesn't know it doesn't know the difference and so also just like doing a lot of education around that and then it is yeah it's and it's finding what works for the person and yeah. knowing that like how you said there is a time and a place like in a marathon no I don't want necessarily an athlete pulling out a peanut butter and jelly sandwich <laughs> but right. in an ultra that might be a great option absolutely um, so giving them the education of understanding their energy, the energy systems that they're using. And then I always kind of in my practice talk about combining like science and the personal yep. experience in that individual's body and that kind of puzzle of this is what science says in terms of types of carbs and grams per hour and pre and during. And then this is what works for you and your history. And it's definitely like blending the two. Mm -hmm. And, but yeah, that's, that's my, That's so well said. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's great, Heidi. Oh, my God. Sarah, now working with more strength athletes, what do you do for carbohydrate? How are, What recommendations are you doing more complex carbs? Are you doing more simple? What are, what are you doing? Yeah, that's a great question. I just want to say, Kylie, Heidi, really well said. I, I still work <laughs> with runners as well, too. I've not done much with ultra runners, um, but marathon and below. Um, and that's just a big thing to quick touch on. Just 
that education and just reconnecting that mindset that sugar is okay and it's fine to eat and it has a place and it has an importance and why it matters and why it's really valuable to your body. And that, yes, we don't want to try anything on new on race day, as we all know, and we want to train our guts. Um, but you know, it's okay to pull out that rice crispy. It's all right to like pull out that pop tart and you don't need to run X amount of miles to, as to yes. use quotations, like you said, Heidi, to deserve it, to, yes. to enjoy it, to have it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been huge with runners that I've been working with here. Um, just kind of reconnecting yes. that mindset and mentality. So I did want to touch on that, but just second and third, everything that the two of you said, um, all of that I do with runners and athletes here. And, um, I think it's such valuable education because there's been so much misinformation and, and misleading of, what's natural, what's a whole food, et cetera. So really clarifying that out um, is so critical and so key. So keep up the work you both are doing. That's that's <laughs> awesome in your spaces. Um, because I do see more of that soccer, um, more of that baseball um, athlete as well too. Um, still focusing on carbs, you know, with them as well. Um, you know, it may be a different amount of carbs, right? We may be competing at a different intensity than your, your runner, your ultra runner. So it's a different sport. It's a different energy system at different times, but Mm -hmm. still focusing on, on why carbs matter and what carbs are important to keep in our bag, to keep on the sidelines, um, is really huge. I had a, a parent when I had brought up, you know, having a, a fruit snack pack in their, their bag. Why would we do that? That's, that's awful. Why, why would I, why would I feed my kid fruit snacks? Um, that's, you know, uh, the the clean eating kind of thing. Well, that's not clean eating. We don't do that in this household. And Mm -hmm. so just to have that conversation with them of exactly what Heidi said, I mean, what is a fruit snack? (laughs) No, it's exactly what Heidi did. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Yes, that's so it makes me want to vomit and yeah. scream. I know. I know. Snacks. Um, that's sixty calories. Snack snack. But but that alone yes. is it's a it's a oh. true it's a true sickness. I mean it ha- it is growing it is getting so bad. I did not mm-hmm. mean to cut you off, Sarah. But you no, just said you no. said such an excellent point. Uh, okay, go ahead. No, 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 <laughs> no. I, I love I love the feedback. I love yeah. I love the conversation around it. No, uh, Heidi, it made me feel just so ill to my core just to hear that and to say that right in front of your athlete too it's just oh, yes it just you don't eat really the messaging Ugh. yes the messaging and they're young and you know how that gets ingrained and Ugh. and taken you know uh, sometimes more internally than we think with those offhanded comments but just you know being able to reframe that conversation redirect it with that parent and I did the same thing as Heidi I pulled out um a, a honey singer packet versus a fruit snack and we looked at that together because Parents thought honey stinger, you know, was so much better, so much cleaner eating than um, a fruit snack was. And so we compared it, we looked at it, we talked through the different type of sugars. This was a female athlete as well, too. So considering the type of sugars um, with four females as well. And so, you know, that's been really valuable, I think, when you just give that right away example, when you have something to compare it to, and when you have those products on hand to just really re-educate, reconnect, um, that mindset, that mentality, and hopefully do some good, not only for the athlete, but also for the parent that's involved in that situation. Um, so I would say, you know, most of it still applies to my athletes as well, too, that Kylie and Heidi spoke to, um, again, it just comes down to maybe difference in, in timing and, um, frequency. And then of course amount, but, uh, all the same and second what you all say for sure. Um, well, we're definitely at time. Guys. <laughs> this is so great. I mean, there's so many other questions that I like want to, we need to have a part two pull out there. We probably should have a part two. I mean, I you guys are part two. Oh, so encore, cool. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really cool. So I, I wanted to get into another, um, big question, but let's maybe say write it that. down. I will definitely. And so we do like to always end by asking our guests what their favorite food is. So in two seconds, what (laughs) is your favorite food? Favorite food. Kylie. Ice cream. Yeah, girl. Sweet. Heidi. Sarah. Heidi. Tacos. Ice cream. Peanut oh, butter. Uh, All together? No. So is that a <laughs> choco taco? Tier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, choco tacos? Do you guys remember those? Oh yeah. my God, yes. Oh, yes. My I got God. one from the from the ice cream man a couple <laughs> summers ago. 
So like, but it was an experience. It was <laughs> underwhelming. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh, they, so they probably changed it. Keep they it probably in the changed it. They must yeah. Have. <laughs> yeah. The nostalgia was nice, but it wasn't yes. quite as oh, my God. robust as I remember it being. Dang it! Yeah. Oh bummer. Got it. <laughs> Sarah, what about you? Oh, peanut butter hands down. I yes. just I love it. I could put it in everything and anything. anything. Soup smoothie. I mean, just soup. oatmeal, anything. <laughs> Let's go. Yes, yes, yes because yeah. it's warm and milky. It's yeah. warm and milky. I, exactly. Yes, you're correct. I I must try this. Yes. <laughs> I'll give you a recipe. Please do. Yes. <laughs> All right. Very good. That's awesome. Oh, you guys, thanks so much for your time today. This is so fantastic. Super, super fun. And we we talked about so much great information for our listeners. So thank you so much for contributing. And yes, let's get another Encore. Book. So yep. all right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have questions you want to hear discussed on the show? Find us on Facebook or visit between two pastries.com and drop us a line. Want to support the show? Find us on Patreon for exclusive content. If you love the show, find us on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform. Hit the subscribe button and leave us a review.